Now notice John Dewey is a Hegelian, and the kind of training that the teachers are getting is based on the theory of inquiry, which is based on the dialectic of Hegel. And Wittgenstein hadn't been familiar with Hegel before. Now he's familiar with Hegel through Dewey, and he ends up realizing that he was wrong. His book, the first book, his Tractatus, was wrong. So he ends up going back to work, and he ends up uh, um, coming, well, he never actually lived long enough to publish the second one, but the second one is his book, um, I had a whole seminar on this stuff, and now I'm not remembering what it is. Um, easiest way to do this. Theory of inquiry, no, not the theory of inquiry. Philosophical investigation. And in the philosophical investigations, what he comes to realize is that words mean what they do in context in an evolutionary culture. So what happens is what's true in one context might not be true in another context. In other words, the this, this same problem that we get from John Dewey uh, that's associated with the warranted assertion and that kind of pragmatic problem. How do we know when something is true? Well, it's true in a particular context, but what about outside of that context? Uh, the most annoying thing, by the way, is, is looking at, at you know, what's going on in the Middle East right now. I've mentioned this a couple times, and I'm, I'm thrilled my videos didn't get blocked. Remember the one video just never never got po posted. And I think that was the one where I was talking about the crisis in the Middle East. But last class I talked a little bit about it, and guess what? That worked, because it still got posted. So I'm like, okay, must have, must have said the right words or something. But the, um, you know, because there's an algorithm that I'm sure would block anything otherwise. Um, and by the way, if, if Think about what I'm, I've, I've said about having to try to see both sides of what's going on. By the way, I, I don't actually consider what Hamas says as a side. And I, I agree with everybody that that's a terrorist organization, and they're, you know, that's not the organization you're trying to cooperate with. No, I, you know, in any case, um, still we have to recognize that the people that are members of Hamas think that they have a side. And we just, you know, feel like they're not worthy of our, our acceptance, right? But when we're, we're looking at how language works, language is subject to evolving and meanings will evolve. Now, remember I mentioned that C.S. Lewis is going to argue against this case. I mean, England was persuaded by the second uh, uh, period of Wittgenstein's uh, thinking, which is referred to as the ordinary language analysis period. And in, in college, I had uh, one class, Philosophy of Language, where we had one textbook, uh, which was written by Carl Ziff. And I think the title of the book was good or something like that. And our whole class, we were trying to think up all the different meanings that you could find for the use of the word good in English. That was actually interesting, but eventually got to be quite a drag, you know, because you felt like, gosh, we thought of all the words, all the meanings, but we had to keep going, right? Um, in any case, um, C.S. Lewis, um, I don't want that. I want the book that's 
it's called words. the title studies and words is the book so one of his books is called studies and words and his main argument in that is that words have meaning and that the whole point of going to school is to learn what the words mean and teachers have to teach students what they mean so thinking that the words evolve and that the meanings will evolve is absolutely the opposite of getting an education Does that make sense? I mean, the reason you go to school is to learn the correct meaning of the words. And if we're, we're actually teaching the students that words can change their meanings, how can you actually expect students to, to be literate? How, how can you expect them to write clearly, et cetera? Uh, C.S. Lewis, as a teacher, was primarily concerned with making sure people learn not only uh, um, the things that uh, uh, were true from the, the Middle Ages and true from contemporary times, uh, but how they would be prepared to uh, know certainty in the future as well. Um, so fascinating argument. <laughs> I think, think they've actually identified the textbook I don't think he said it specifically in his book, but there was a textbook already being used in British schools that he was trying to fight against in this one. Pretty interesting. C.S. Lewis. When did C.S. Lewis die? His death day, if we call it that. 22nd November. Notice today is his birthday, or would have been his birthday had he been still here. Uh, and not only did he die on the same day that JFK was assassinated, but so did Agilus Huxley. It's kind of interesting, all three of them. By the way, did anyone notice that the October 7th date that Hamas attacked Israel was Putin's birthday? So at least some people think that what Hamas was doing was giving Putin a birthday present. I, when I heard that, I thought, you're kidding. So I had to go and look, and uh, look up Putin. Vladimir, and here he is. And if we go and look, what was his birthday? His birthday. Um, Where's the birthday? Personal details. Born? 7 October. So they weren't kidding. That's kind of interesting. So what do we do next? So I'll spend more time with Wittgenstein, but now since we've already started a little bit, we could go into Quine and neopragmatism. I was wondering how I was going to fit both of those in. Um, but So that'll be Monday. And we have class Monday and Wednesday of next week. And next week is the last of the regular session, because the following week is finals week. And remember, we only meet once on Wednesday at 10 o'clock, if you can come. So that's where we're doing, where we're going. Remember, I, I do need uh, your third exam. Uh, and if you haven't, the first two exams, 
other words, I need everything now. Some of you are finished, yay team. Uh, but um, for those that haven't finished, please do uh, send things in. It's very uh, nerve wracking to be sitting there uh, Wednesday afternoon when I have to finish my grades by like, you know, six o'clock in the evening uh, or so. And I've still got students that haven't sent me anything. <laughs> there are some. Boy, that's scary. Um, please send me stuff. Oh, yeah, I'll send it to you at 11. No, <laughs> I need it now. <laughs> please send stuff in. Um, and you could send it earlier, too, which is fine, too. Right? So that's good. Um, okay. Fun? And remember the... Um, the quiz question? Did everybody get it? Yes? No. No? What was it? Quiz question. Oh, quiz question. Uh oh. Did I lose it? What impact did Dewey have on education? Oh, that's why I lost it. I clicked on the link. Which one? This one here. Am I using the web, web resources well enough? For you guys, I feel inadequate. There's just so much going on, so much new stuff. My goodness. As Doug Sweatshirt says, things are. No, say it. No. Yeah, you can no. say it. No. Mm -hmm. Things are fucking awesome. Well, yeah. I, I pointed to it. That's pretty close. Mm. When I hit the F word, though, there's like a, an automatic... It's a bit intense for... It is. It is. I've, I've spent, well, 72 years not being allowed to say that. I'm allowed uh, to say it. You don't get over it very easily, you know. Once you start saying it, it loses its sparkle. And then there's there's a, a line in Aurora, uh, one of her songs, which it's actually not her song. It's a song that... Uh, um, um, David Bowie sang where she sings um, about the nature of life I guess and she refers to it as a and well no I can't but yeah All right. I mean, well she uses the word freaky but then there's another word and then she calls it a show she's and not wrong no, it's it's fascinating actually. Emmett. Are you a male block at class? To yes, I'm heading upstairs. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm this close.